gosh. Oops. Sorry about that, guys. Left the banner up there. Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, and welcome to another edition of the Hard Truth Show. Guys, this is stream number 25. Uh, Going to be having a very, very interesting and deep discussion today on understanding the scriptural calendar. I'm honored to have Elder Troy Smith in the building today. I'm sorry, <coughs> Troy Miller. I <laughs> got so many people in my, my log here. And um, with Creation Calendar, I've got the links and stuff to share with you guys so that we can uh, get all this uh, in your field of view where that you can go and view all this material and um, look into it and understand it. I know a lot of you guys have hit me up in recent videos and streams and asked, you know, how do you figure certain things out about the Father's Calendar? I don't understand it, Luke. How do we get from A to B? Um, tonight, I'm hoping that those questions can be answered and laid bare. Ladies and gentlemen, the SUN day worship, the SAT day worship on the Roman calendar, uh, the Enoch format, Zadok format, calendars, all this stuff. Like you see a lot of it talked about, it expressed that this is the way, that's the way, etc. cetera. I, I want to express to you today that the Father's Only Solar Scriptural Calendar format is very simple to understand. The answers are always there. You just got to do your research, diligent research in the scripture. And um, Troy is going to go over all that tonight with ends and hopefully following we can do some uh, in-depth Q&A. Um, disclaimers, as always, content guests and content and views shared by guests do not necessarily reflect the views of Seven Trumps Prepper Channel. For our use at the front of the video, content being shared for information, edification, and educational intents and purposes. Um, real quick shout out, guys, to our affiliates um, that help support the channel, uh, not only for prepping, but also to support the Hard Truth stream. Uh, guys, if you're trying to get prepared for anything nuclear, biological, chemical, or radiological, make sure to check out Mirror Safety. They are in the video description below the link. Uh, premium technology. Going to be doing a gear review on this very shortly. I've got a bunch of stuff this week coming up to show you. Also, make sure to check out Faraday Defense. Uh, EMP system protection for your computers, small electronics, et cetera, uh, you know, in the prepping world is definitely uh, a good stop to check that out. And that also goes to help support the channel. Um, one last thing that I want to share with you guys as far as affiliates go, it's not so much affiliate, but it can also help you hopefully later down the road cash this in and get you some preps for hard times to come. You can mine cryptocurrency now with your phone. Um, the link is in the video description below. The um, two students, I believe it was from Stanford, um, got this started up. It will hopefully go public next year. In the meantime, you can mine it with your phone. And later, like I said, hopefully turn that in, get you some preps. Links in the video description below. Wishing all the best with that, guys. Um, last thing is Battle Cry. They will be doing a conference online 25th, 26th of June of this year. Make sure to check that out. Um, links in the video description below. I'll be speaking about the Seven Trumpets of Revelation, what's coming in the last days. Y'all will and I'm breathing. That will be the goal to discuss that. And um, real quickly, I think the last thing I want to point out is the Georgia Guidestones official notification. We will be putting that out hopefully in about another month about the prayer meetup for the destruction of the New World Order and to the most high to bring wrath down on all this stuff that they're trying to set up to ruin so many of us, many of us, our lives in the uh, future to come. Uh, shout out to everybody in the comments section. We got people in the building from Australia tonight. We got people local in the house. We got somebody in the house from Peru. Um, that's awesome. So shalom to everybody. Um, somebody said, love your videos, teaches me a lot. I appreciate that guys. And last comment real quickly before we get this started. Keep the new moon and Sabbath, Sabbath and new moon. That is right. Isaiah 66 and 23 also states that we will be keeping the new moons and Sabbaths in the new kingdom. So I think it's very wise that we get in tune to this now. Um, so right before I bring Troy on, I wanted to share two things with you guys because I think it is paramount to understand um, the dynamic that is in play today when it comes to this particular thing. When we're a child, we get uh, brought into um school we're set a globe in front of us and and all these false indoctrinations at the public school indoctrination camp but also at church you know one of the things is we get hit with the calendar system of rome and then we just expect that that is what it is 
And I think one of the biggest problems is cognitive dissonance is where that we are aware that that belief or action is inconsistent, but we just follow it to go along to get along. I'll give you an example, like the church house, you might go to church and the Bible states one thing, but the church doctrine is in complete contradiction of that, but you feel that torn tension and awareness in your soul that something's not right. Well, as you can see right here is this little example, like if somebody had a smoking problem, right? Well, it's unhealthy. So what do you do? Well, you either stop smoking or you, you know, uh, you change your action. You just continue to do it, right? The solution or you change your belief is that your research says that, you know, one smoking is not conclusive. So that's, that's one problem that's out there. The other thing is Stockholm syndrome, I think, in people's minds because they feel emotionally connected um, to the abuser, which you can also say the system, um, sharing the abuser's values, the system's values. Um, you know, I did, you can see right there the multiple different things that when you apply that to a religious system, how that people kind of get indoctrinated because after enough time, um, I. I think it was Heimler in Nazi Germany stated that, you know, if you say a lie long enough, loud enough, people will believe it. <clears throat> and I think that that's what's going on with a lot of the religious systems today. Um, and one last thing I want to point out is somebody said this happy flat earth day, everyone. Yeah. Today's supposed to be earth day guys. So happy flat earth day to everybody in the uh, know and in the truth. So guys, without further ado, I'm going to bring Troy on. And I want to turn the helm over to him and I want to let him enlighten you um, to so much that needs to be restored in these last days. And we were honored to have this elder with us at the Restoring the Foundations conference that me, my wife and brother Joel put together. Uh, we we're so honored to have him down to speak. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn him loose on you. And I hope this is an immense blessing to you tonight, guys. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Thank you. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I uh, I tried to get that down within 10. We got it with eight minutes. Tonight. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Doing good. Yep. Um, <clears throat> welcome, everybody around the world. That's that's kind of exciting that there's so many people from different corners of this earth. And I can't say planet anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> corners of the earth. There you go. Um, what I'd like to tackle is, is like... Uh, our host uh, set up is we're going to tackle some some Sabbath questions. Um, I was born and raised a Seventh Day Adventist, so keeping of Saturday Sabbath is an organic part of my well, it's an organic part of me. Um, I've never known anything other than a one two three four five six Sabbath one two three four five six Sabbath. That's all I've ever known. When I was about oh, I'm guessing early late thirties, early forties. Um, I'm gonna have to turn my phone off here. Uh, late 30s, early 40s, um, I had an epiphany, I guess you might say. I had some people enlighten me, and uh, I started keeping the feasts. And uh, if you know anything about keeping the Hebrew feasts, they are based on a lunar calendar. Um, shortly after adopting this and just maybe been into it to about a year, my wife kind of said, we were walking up the hill to look at a, a, you know, a first visible crescent, actually, to see if we could identify uh, if the weather was good anyway. And she said, well, you know, the weekly Sabbath, I mean, it's the feasts, if you will, they're regulated by the moon. The Sabbath is the first feast. You know, why don't we keep the Sabbath by the moon? And I gave her this long song and dance about why, you know, that isn't so. And, you know, all it was... I, I need to write this down at some point so I can share it and have a kind of a word for word replay. But basically everything I told her to, to defend that the the annual Sabbath were based on the lunar cycle, but the weekly Sabbath was Saturday. Um, everything I told her was a lie. Not one thing was true. And that was upon examination of the evidence. Well, um, a lot of people, when they uh, faced with something like that, they tend to dig in their heels or maybe run the other way or run screaming or hide or and i admit i kind of put it on the back burner i was challenged and i really didn't know what to do with it i was kind of actually when i started kind of seeing the truth of it i was kind of afraid of what it the outcome might be although i knew in my heart uh, instinctively that it was true i mean i've been the truth i had been on a truth seeking path um for about two years at that point and so i guess the father felt it was time to challenge me so, and thankfully, I 
Well, I took the bait. <laughs> so, you know, and the father's been doing the, uh, reeling me in ever since. So, <laughs> but uh, anyhow, so I have, I have put together, uh, these are the things that I had to tackle um, as a Seventh day Adventist, a Saturday Sabbath keeper, lifelong, fourth generation. Um, I had to tackle, and these are scriptural proofs uh, I, that I'm going to share with you. Uh, some of them are historical, some of them are natural, but I can assure you that you can go home and either read this text yourself or do the look in nature yourself, and you will see uh, that what I'm saying is true. It is not just me saying it. Uh, the, the evidence is there. So I'd like to start with one of the first things, and this is the fact that uh, and most of you, if you are a lunar, if you're if you're a lunar Sabbath keeper, you recognize that the new moon is the third category of day, and uh, we can prove that in several places. Here in a minute, I'm going to um, look at or share you my share with you my screen, and uh, we're going to look at some some events here. And uh, it's going to start with creation, Genesis one one and two. Um, <clears throat> The, Troy, not to interrupt you, I forgot one thing. Your sure, website, I need to post that up, and then I will also uh, post the, uh, what was the other link that you Telegram. just sent me? Telegram. Gotcha. Telegram channel, yep. There's Troy's link, guys, so you can check out his website and his research as well, and I'll post that up multiple times throughout this tonight. There you go. Fair enough. Um, anyway, uh, what I learned is that the new moon is a third category of day, and while that seems foreign to you, perhaps, if you're still keeping a Saturday Sabbath, uh, what happens is the new moon, according to scripture, it's not a weekday. It's not a Sabbath. Um, it is a third category of day, and I have four witnesses that will that will prove that point. But the first one is actually found in Genesis 1, 1, and 2, where it says, in the beginning, Elohim created heaven and the earth, okay? Um, if you know anything about um, time, you understand that without time, uh, there can be no motion. Without motion, there can be no time. If I'm moving something, you know, like this, that is the evidence of time being in existence. And so here we have something moving. In the beginning, Elohim created heaven and earth. Boom! There was heaven and earth. Well, notice that that time frame was not given a name. It wasn't given a title or even. But then we have the first day of the work week where we, he created light and there was light and so on and so forth. Well, I want to interject to you that if the second month after creation began with a new moon and the lunar month that we're in right now began with a new moon, what do you suppose the very first month of Earth's history began with? A new moon. Can I hear you? A new moon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. A new moon. Well, where is it? Well, I'll show you where it's at. It's not rocket science. It's been there the whole time. We just haven't been looking at it. Let's see if I can figure out how to share my screen. Oops. Share screen. Slides, video, share screen. There we go. Okay, I got to jump all through all these hoops here. Window. Sharing screen. All right. So what we have here is a calendar where we you see the Genesis 1, 1, and 2 is right here as a new moon. This is actually day one of the month. Uh, if you will, day one of the week is certainly the first day of the work week, but it is the second day of the month. Now, that may seem foreign to you, and a lot of people are scratching your heads, but please bear with me. If I can prove to you that the new moon is a third category of day, you will have no other option than to put it aside, and then you will have to deal with it the same as I did, all right? But we have very... Every, 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 yeah, every evidence here, well, I have the text there, Genesis 1, 3 through 5, that's the first day of the work week. Genesis 1, 6 through 8, that's the second day of the work week. Those are all listed there. By all means, look at them, enjoy them. Um, and please understand that when we get to the seventh day Sabbath, it is the eighth day of the month. Oh, the welcome wagon. <laughs> Oh, can you hear that in the background? I, a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to mute myself good. out here. No, that's quite all right. I have dogs too, so mine may blow up at some point. So, <laughs> But anyway, what we wind up with is the, the weekly Sabbath being on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th day of the month. That theme is going to run throughout Scripture. All right? In fact, I'm going to say it now. Every Sabbath, every weekly Sabbath that can be date identified falls on either a 8th, 15th, 22nd, or 29th day of the month. Now, granted, and remember, this is a lunar month, all right? So let's back up here 
and we're going to add Ezekiel 46.1 to the mix. All right. Now, Ezekiel 46.1 is yet future. This is when uh, the temple will be back on earth. But uh, 46.1 says, it says, when will the gate be open? Okay. Um, he says the Sabbath, excuse me, on the new moons and Sabbath, the gate would be open. But on the six working days, it would be shut. And I should probably just read that. I don't have it queued up here, but that's all right. It's not difficult to find. I'm already in Ezekiel. <laughs> so sorry if I'm off screen here. I'm leaning toward my scripture because it's in the light. And there we go. 46 1 says, Thus saith Yah, sovereign Yah, excuse me, the gate to the inner court that looks toward the east shall be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be open, and the day of the new moon it shall be open. All right. That is an equation that you're going to have a very difficult time rec reconciling with the Saturday Sabbath. Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I know you can't answer me, but I'm going to say this. If Wednesday, you can see the little paragraph up there, if new moon fell on a pagan Wednesday, would the gate to the court, inner court be open or shut? And if you said, well, it's, um, it's, it should be shut, it's a work day. I would say, of course, Wednesday's a work day. It must be shut. That's what you would say. And But I'd say, but friend, it's new moon. It must be open. If and <laughs> new moon falls on, it can fall on any day of the uh, Roman Gregorian week. And it's, I'm going to stop sharing screen here so I can look at you. If I can figure out how to get back. Am I up? Hang on, I'll, I'll blow us up there. There okay, you go. Am I, am I back on screen? Yeah, you're back on so, screen. All right, so there's no right answer. If 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 it's a Wednesday, that's a work day. That means that the gate should be shut. But if it's new moon day, that means the gate should be open. Mm -hmm. And please note that Ezekiel 46.1 said that the gate would be shut on all six work days. If it hadn't said that, I wouldn't have a leg to stand on. You could say, well, you can every once in a while, if it happens to fall on a work day, you can open the, well, sorry. I don't have any wiggle room and neither do you. The gate to the inner court is going to be shut on all six working days and only open on Sabbath and new moon. What that does is it presents a conundrum for Saturday Sabbath keepers because there is only two categories of day on a Gregorian calendar. You have work days and Sabbath. That's it. But in the scriptural calendar, you've got a new moon day, which is not a work day. And it's not, excuse me, yeah, not a work day and it's not a Sabbath. So it's a, I call it a hybrid day, but it's in, in essence what it is, is a third category of day. And there are three other witnesses that I'm going to share with you. Uh, you write these down, okay? I'm going to go back to sharing the screen here. And I have to jump through these hoops every time I do? Yeah, yeah. Okay, not a problem. Don't no, no okay. worry, I got you over here. Okay, here is the three other witnesses. We have Amos 8.5, and you have... There's some unscrupulous vendors that are, it actually talks about them, you know, falsifying the balances by deceit, but they're angry because they can't sell anything to Israel because it's a new moon or a Sabbath. So my question is, is when would these unscrupulous vendors be able to sell or cheat Israel? Well, that would be on a work day. So what we have here is we have three different categories of day that doesn't mention the work days there. It says it's, it's Sabbath and new moon. And they're lamenting, when will it be over? When will new moon and Sabbath be over so we can cheat Israel? <laughs> well, when could they? Work day, three categories of day. Isaiah 66, 23, it says that we're going to be worshiping on this, in the, in the new heaven and new earth, we're going to be worshiping Yah on the Sabbaths and new moons. What days will we not be worshiping the Heavenly Father? On the work days. On the work days. Okay. You don't you have two of the categories of day listed there, but please note that the six working days are mentioned by their absence because those are non worship days. Now I should say this is uh, New Moon Day, the whole entire day is not holy. There's a holy convocation or a set apart convocation on New Moon Day, uh, but the entire day is not set apart like the Sabbath. That's why I say the new moon is kind of a hybrid day. Um, now, Second uh, Kings 4.23, let me set the table here. This is about the Shunammite woman. If you remember, Elisha would walk by, and uh, the, it was kind of a halfway point. And I'm going to come back off the screen here and here because it, uh, this is irrelevant. <laughs> anyway, um, what we have here is the Shunammite woman 
uh, they they build Elisha a room on the top of their house, and he stops there, and he's so grateful for their benevolence that he says, in your season, you will have a son, because he noticed they were childless. Well, they have a boy. Uh, when this child doesn't say how old he is, he's, he's young enough to go out in the field with his dad. He's out there in the field. He collapses. He faints, I guess, of some sort, and the, the, the father sends him home to his mother. There, the boy lays his head on her lap until he dies. The Shunammite woman then carries him up, puts him on Elisha's bed. She runs out to her, to honey, to her husband and says, Honey, I need a servant and a donkey. I got to go see the holy man. And he said, and this is 2 Kings 4.23, Why are you going to see him today? It's neither new moon nor Sabbath. That's right. So where was this man? Out in his field. What was he doing? Working. Working. <laughs> Not rocket science. We have four witnesses in scripture that prove where's my camera there's four there we go we have four witnesses that prove that the new moon day is a it's not included in the work week okay so once you understand that new moon is a third category day and that's kind of the key that unlocks the lunar solar sabbath lunar solar calendar if you will if you understand that new moon is a third category day the rest of it's easy that's right and it's the key to the creator's calendar really that is right it's the absolute key now i'm going to start banging some well if you're in a if you're in a prison you rattle the <laughs> you rattle your cup and you you know on the bars whatever i'm going to start rattling some cages here and i'm going to start challenging you the same exact way now some of these my wife challenged me with okay cuz she's she's not afraid to ask me the tough questions um but uh, some of these I just kind of tripped over myself because I was keeping the feast at the time and I was doing the math. It's like, oh, wait a minute. But you're going to get to enjoy most of these here. I don't know if I'll get through all of them, and I'm going to try. Battle of Jericho. We're going to start there. Does that sound good for you? Oh, that sounds, that's a great start-off <laughs> point. That's going to wreck a lot of people's mathematics. Yeah, this is going to blow up everything that you think about Saturday Sabbath, all right? And I'm not going to apologize because if it's true, if you're a truth seeker and what I'm sharing with you is true, then what I'm saying shouldn't be upsetting to you. That's right. Truth seekers seek truth. Okay. So let's examine the evidence here. Um, <clears throat> my first question, or let's see, the battle, uh, battle of Jericho was how long? Seven days, correct? That's right. Seven days. And uh, every able-bodied Israelite took with them every weapon at their disposal. The priests carried with them the Ark of the Covenant. They had the ram's horns. They had, um, I, I don't know what all they carried in there. I don't know what weapons they had, but this was 40 years after they were in the wilderness. So I don't know where, maybe they, some of the weapons washed up on the shore of the Red Sea. I don't know <laughs> how they got these weapons, but they were prepared for battle. And uh, <clears throat> this, in this battle, Israel is the oppressor. They're on the offensive. Jericho's on the defensive. That makes a difference, okay? I want you to pay attention. If you want to read this account in Joshua 6, um, now, if you'll read the account in Joshua 6, you'll find out that only Joshua knew that this was going to be a seven-day affair. This was never told. You can read the account. Joshua never told the soldiers. The Heavenly Father never told the soldiers. Only Joshua knew it was going to be seven days. So here you have these soldiers, and they were told, you just march around there, and when you hear the signal, you attack. You go get just wherever you are facing the wall, you turn toward the wall and run toward it. That's that's what they were told. They had no idea when this was going to happen. But so they were walking around Jericho on a full tilt adrenaline rush. I mean, they're going into battle and at the a drop of a hat. They're fixing to go slay dragons here. So and they had no idea when this signal would come. My question to you is which day is the Sabbath? I, my first question was, how many days was this siege? Seven. seven days. That's seven right. Days. Which day was the Sabbath? I'm going to go for 500 on Jeopardy for none of them. <laughs> what is none of them? <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> okay. Here's a few more questions before I spring this on you. The answer. I'll spring it. This is not, it's not terribly difficult, but it's, this is fun to discover. Okay. Uh, here's a couple of questions. Did the Heavenly Father ever send Israel into battle on the Sabbath? No. No. Work, wars work. Okay. Um, Israel had just come out of the wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness. Do you suppose that the very first thing that the heavenly, and they, where they learned the Sabbath for the manna and other thing, and a man, a man went out and picked up sticks and he on the Sabbath and he was killed. I mean, they had all kinds of Sabbath lessons in the wilderness. Okay, they just come out of the wilderness for 40 years. Do you suppose that the very first thing the Heavenly Father would ask them to do is break the Sabbath by marching around Jericho? 
Absolutely not. Does it make any sense? It makes, no, it makes no sense at all. Yeah, makes no sense at all. Okay. So <clears throat> guess what? If it's a seven day feast and Saturday is the Sabbath, that means one, two, three, four, five, six, Sabbath, one, two, three, four, five, six, Sabbath. Guess what? You're in trouble if you're a Saturday Sabbath keeper. Because this problem goes all the way back to Jericho. And guess what? I'll just tell you a little secret here. My wife, when she was four years old, remember, she's an Adventist too. She's fifth generation. She was asking her crater old teachers, kindergarten teachers, excuse me, kindergarten teachers in Sabbath school about the Jericho. Because every three years, they teach the same stuff over and over again in the Adventist church. And so every three years, she would ask her teacher, uh, it's a seven-day seven day battle. Which day is the Sabbath? She never got an answer. They hemmed and hawed and hawed and hemmed, but they, this was a four-year-old child that started asking. And, you know, you don't get that from anybody. Sorry not to interrupt you, Elder. You don't get that from nobody. Seventh-day Adventist crowd, you don't get it from people that keep the Enoch calendar. You don't get yeah. it from the Zadok. And I don't mean to beat up on people, but Book of Yasher 88 chapter verifies mm -hmm. what Joshua says. And it even yeah. goes in to say that it, the battle began we're, on New Moon. We're, Day. We're going, I'm fixing to yeah. show them that. Fixing to show them that. Oh, so, sorry. <laughs> oh, you're, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, so anyhow, it wasn't until my wife was in high school that she asked her uh, religion teacher about the Battle of Jericho, seven day, you know, thing, which day is the Sabbath? And he did this. Hmm. This doesn't seem likely that they would have marched around on the Sabbath. He gave her that ad that admission, but nothing else. Made him think. Here's a kid asking him a question that he should have asked a long time ago and never did. And quite frankly, every Seventh Day Adventist should have been asking this question, or Seventh Day Sabbath keeper, maybe Saturday Sabbath keeper, should have been asking a long time ago, and they have not. Okay. So if you're interested in knowing exactly how they managed to do this without uh, breaking the Sabbath, where well, I'm going to go back to my screen here, and I'm going to share with you some very interesting things. First of all, I'm going to share with you this quote from the book of Jasher. Now, in Scripture, it doesn't give you this, what I have underlined there. It says, and it was on the second, it was in the second month, that is in Scripture, in Josh, Josh, uh, Joshua 6. In the second month, on the first day of the month, that Yah said to Joshua, rise up, behold, I've given Jericho into your hand. And it says, your fighting men will go around once each day, and you should do for six days. And on the seventh day, they went around the city seven times, and the priests blew upon the trumpets, and you know what happened. So, if the battle started on the first day of the month, that's what day? Remember I told you there's three categories of day earlier? If this is the first day of the month, that means it is a new moon day. Pay attention. They marched around one time, one time, one time, one time, one time, one time for a total of six times on through six days. And on the seventh day, they marched around seven times. And guess what? That was not a Sabbath. It was a sixth day of the week. It, Israel marched around Jericho. Uh, for seven straight days, and they never broke the Sabbath. That's right. And there is a second witness. Have I showed this to you, the second witness? Uh, I, no, I don't think so. I mean, the only other witness I could ever find was the book of Maccabees, that, you know, all the a, way up to the time I of the have Greeks. a second witness in Scripture. Nice. Are, you're going to believe this? Watch this. I'm going to go back to sharing screen. Am I, or am I still sharing? Okay. Uh, no, no, you'll have to okay. add it. I'm back. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm reading from 1 Kings 20, 26 through 29. It says, And it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrians and went up to effect to fight Israel. Let's this blah, blah, blah. Read not, You can read them there if you want to. I'm going right back down here to the last verse. It's there. You can see I'm not making it up. It says, And they pitched one over against the other for seven days. We have Syria and Israel, and they're carrying on. They're pitched against each other for seven days, and it was, and so it was, and on the seventh day, the battle was joined, and the children of Israel slew the Syrians and 100,000 footmen in one day. Okay, here we have another seven-day battle siege where they're kind of looking at each other for six days, seven days, and then on the seventh day, the battle was pitched. What does this say right here? I just highlighted it for you. Can you see that on screen? Uh, let me see. It says, and it came to pass on the return of the year. Okay. The return of the year, that's that's the very first day of the year, correct? New moon day. Yeah, that's that, right. If this is the first day of the first month of the year, what day is that? New moon day. That's a new moon day. 
<laughs> That's awesome. All right, here we go. So they pitched on New Moon Day. This is one time. They pitched another time. They pitched the third day. They pitched the fourth day. They pitched the fifth day. They pitched the sixth day. And on the seventh day, the battle was joined. Did Israel break the Sabbath? No, sir. They did not. I've got two witnesses. Now, how many witnesses do I need to prove something's true in Scripture? Uh, by the mouth of two witnesses, a matter's confirmed. At a mouth, or three, if you need it. When are you, so, uh, the third one, have you ever thought about the book of Maccabees? I have not, but if you'll share that with me, I'll add that to the pile. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey, did you get that about the uh, Andrews University? Did you get a check? At I that have thing? not gotten a chance to look at it. I've been oh, working okay. all day. But um, I need to share it. that link later whenever we get to that point. There. But um, so with Maccabean revolt, something that was interesting to me is Maccabees wouldn't fight on Sabbath. Correct. So they made certain not to draw a sword on Sabbath. So what was interesting to me is in the Grecian era, if they would not draw a sword, then why on earth would they have ever drawn a sword on Sabbath all the way back to Jericho? So, you know, I mean, that was such a continuity yeah. Yeah. of uh, one more example that, you know, warfare yeah. is not going to be conducted on Sabbath. That is correct. And so, I mean, take it to the bank. And there's there th that I just showed you one that the new moon is the third category of day and the Battle of Jericho, that was all it took for me. Now, some people may be a little bit more stuck in your tradition and or the whatever it is, your doctrine or pride of opinion. I'm not going to say what or why or how. I'm standing on something. I think I just tripped over my own cord to my, <laughs> to my microphone. My feet are doing strange things below me. I don't know why. Or maybe there's a dog below me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyhow. Oh, I did. I stepped on something. You know, tip, tip in my computer here. I got to get this out from underneath my foot. Anyhow, so we have, uh, you You probably heard me say it a minute ago, one, two, three, four, five, six, Sabbath, one, two, three, four, five, six, Sabbath. People say, oh, Saturday's been the Sabbath all the way back to creation. You've heard that. Have you ever said that? Uh, I probably, <laughs> at some point when I was deep if, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I probably bought into that narrative. That's what we are told. The Saturday is the Sabbath that goes all the way back to creation. Well, would you be surprised if I showed you that that count blows up a whole lot sooner than that? Let's go to the creation or the, excuse me, the crucifixion account. Scholars have said that the year of the crucifixion, based on other historical events that they have to put on the timeline, it would have had to have been either A.D. 30, 31, or 33. Those are the only three years that scholars, and of course they don't agree on which one that is. Adventists chose 31 AD, and there's other, you know, religions that have chosen other numbers, and that's fine and well, because what I'm going to prove to you here is that none of them are, <laughs> it doesn't matter which one you fall on. But Passover is a on a lunar calendar, correct? That's right. Passover, there's a full moon that comes up that night, correct? That's right. Okay. So if the crucifixion weekend was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is what we're taught, then there would have to be a Friday that had a full moon in that span somewhere in order to have a Friday, Saturday, Sunday crucifixion weekend. Okay. Now the moon, the, the lunar cycle is very predictable. It hasn't changed by a few microseconds over hundreds and thousands of years, maybe. So you can, if you have a, a lunar, um, what do they call them? Lunar calculator, I guess is what they call it. Lunar phase calculator. And there's all, there's, you can find them all over. There's software all over that you can use. And, and they're probably all accurate. I don't, I can't promote one over the other. I can tell you which ones I use, but that would be maybe unfair to the other vendors that are out there. But the point is, is they all will come up for pretty much the same answer. But if you'll plug in when the full moon was in all of those years, you'll find out that one, two, three, four, five, six Sabbath blows up in the first century. Okay, here we go. Um, I guess I need to go to my screen here. I should have already been pushing the button, so I didn't had it ready to go, but I apologize. Here we are. All right, read this. Passover in the year of the crucifixion. If, and then I, all these days I found by typing, finding out when the full moon, when the new moon was and then the full moon was in these years. And I started all the way in 27 AD to 33 AD. That covers the entire ministry of the man from Galilee. Passover would have been on a pagan Wednesday in 27 AD. It would have been on Monday in 28 AD, Sunday in 29 AD, Thursday in 30 AD, Tuesday in 20, uh, 31 AD, excuse me, Sunday again, 32, and Thursday in 33 AD. 
Well, I hate to break it to you, but if you can't find a full moon in there falling on a Friday, then there's a problem with the theology of one, two, three, four, five, six, Sabbath, one, two, three, four, five, six, Sabbath. And I'll show you here in just a minute that I can blow it up even sooner than the first century. <laughs> so, nice. So, yeah, I mean, you. I'm sorry, the moon doesn't lie. The, in fact, in Psalms, we're told that the moon is a faithful witness. So, um, because the moon, the lunar cycle hasn't changed, but this microseconds over thousands of years. Okay, so that Thursday was a microsecond one way or the other. I'm sorry, it's still a Thursday. You're not going to get a Friday out of that deal, you know. So, I, I, could, I can't find one. Now, you can manufacture a false new moon day, I suppose, and move it someplace else to get your Friday, Saturday, Sunday if you want. But then you're tampering with the evidence, and then Deuteronomy 4, 2 comes into play. You don't want to add or subtract or diminish aught from the law, and, of course, you don't want to be tampering with evidence either. So, I mean, nature's the first gospel. This is a quote. This is a Troy Miller original. Nature's the first gospel. All nature screams the majesty of Yah. Nature does not lie. Men sure. do. So nature told you that that full moon was on this day. If you want to lie or manufacture a new moon day someplace else so the full moon falls on a different day, guess what? The fault lies in your lap, not in the nature's lap, because nature didn't provide that, for that, full, that new moon to get to that full moon to get it to be on a Friday. I'm sorry, that new moon cannot be manufactured or monkeyed with and to move that full moon somewhere there, because then you're monkeying with nature. I'm sorry. Right. And it's nature untouchable by man. That is right. You cannot touch nature. Nature is. It just simply is. Okay. Um, the next witness we have, let me turn this page here so I can see. Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm going to blow it up even sooner. I'm glad I did this is in the order that I did it. Um, Saturday is a day on a pagan papal calendar. Okay. And <clears throat> it's not on a Hebrew calendar. All right. We, if Saturday is the weekly Sabbath, then how come there's no Saturday in the Roman calendar in the first century? Okay, right. in the first century, um, Rome had a something called the Roman Republican calendar. I got and, you right here, Elder. Oh, you here got you, the, go. you got it on the screen there. Yeah, can you see it now? I I can. That's it. Uh, actually, that's a prettier picture than the one I got. So you just keep it there as long as you want. Okay, I got the <laughs> okay. Baths of Titus too. If you want me to cue that up too, I got some stuff in the ammo box. Okay, awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, it is assumed that Saturday is the seventh day Sabbath of the ca the calendar uh, in the first century. Now, this calendar that you're looking at right now is from the first century era, okay? And you'll notice right over here, it starts with an A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Is, is my cursor showing up on there? Uh, no, no. And if I did, then it would be blocking... If I shared screen, I wouldn't be, well, I could share screen and leave it on this page, right? Uh, I think I see. can. Uh, yeah, we can try. Let's try I'm gonna, it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose the page that you're on. And now, do you see my cursor now? Is that moving around? No. No? Okay. All right. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to stop sharing then since you can't see my cursor. Look over in the top left. The, the number that says live and it's counting down, it's covering up the A. But if you start counting straight down, it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Count on your fingers. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. That's eight. And then you'll notice if you keep down, counting down after the H, it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. In the first century, Rome had an eight-day market week, not a seven-day planetary week. Okay, you can probably take that off screen now. I think right. I've proven my point. But it, notice across the top says January, February, March, April, May, and then it goes off in the, the Roman. Uh, so you have September and September and October, November, December, so on and so forth there. Yeah, down in, D, uh, down in December, it's always interesting. You can see the feast of S-A-T-U-R-N-Nalia down there too. Yep. Uh, it's it's spelt out down on that lower yep. last portion of it i can't remember if abby pointed that out to me one day or I something we're looking that. at it i see that i had yeah. never seen it before now but sure enough it does say saturnalia so anyhow rome in the first century now remember the new testament era is first century correct so rome did not have a seven day week in the first century so they didn't have a friday saturday sunday 
any of those days. I mean, that's the pagan papal calendar. That's not the first century Roman calendar. So why would Israel have had a pagan calendar for their Sabbath? I mean, it's assumed that everybody had this, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on and so forth, all those pagan days. It's assumed, but it's, well, it's assumed. <laughs> and it's assumed that it extends all the way back to the first century, of course, too. But um, <clears throat> the, as I just showed you, there's no Friday, Saturday, Sunday crucifixion weekend, so there's a problem, okay? And in fact, there's none. Uh, well, there's And there's a secondary reason why you couldn't find that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, crucifixion weekend. There's a secondary weekend. And I just mentioned a minute ago, in the first century, Rome had an eight-day market week or a calendar week, not a seven-day week. Now, I will tell you when Saturday did appear in Rome. And that was in, it, it did not appear in the official Roman calendar until 321 AD. And that's when Constantine venerated the day of the sun. Okay? You want the bath of Titus up for that one? Um, I don't think it's necessary. Um, but anyway, if you want to pop it up, that's fine. I'll just keep talking. You can do whatever you want to. It's your show. Oh, now, I got you. I was just, I just well, no, actually, This is perfect. That's exactly it. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, I didn't know that this had, that little slide had a name. This is actually a first century. Actually, it's a 100 year uh, BC. This is, but this calendar actually went all the way into the fourth century. Um, but this is the pagan calendar. Now, when Rome came, excuse me, when the Roman centurions came back from conquering the world, they brought with them something called Mithraism. Uh, Mithra is the pagan uh, sun god of Persia. Okay. If you'll uh, remember, Persia was uh, a kingdom before Greece, if you will. That Mithraism was very popular when the Roman soldiers found it. They liked it better than their own gods. So they brought Mithraism back with them. And for several hundred years, uh, 400 years or so, there were several calendars that were tolerated, excuse, if you will, in um, the Roman Empire. And they allowed this calendar to be observed. And I guess you could say the pagans observed this calendar. They, you know, not the Romans, but there were, there were some Roman, there were some factions, I guess you could say in Rome that observed this calendar, but this was the pagan planetary week. And um, I don't know if you can see my cursor. I guess you can't, but that first being there on the far left, that is Saturn. Then you have the sun then you have the moon day, then you have Mars day, then you have Mercury's day, then you have Jupiter's day with a little trident there, and then you have Venus day. That is the seven days of the planetary week. Those were the seven lights in the heavens that they could see without a telescope. So that's the, what they had their week named after. Again, please let me remind you, this is the pagan calendar. Nothing more, nothing less. So... This is the calendar that the Roman centurions came back with, and in 321 A.D., Constantine adopted it, and he did it for a reason, um, uh, which he didn't happen to whisper in my ear, but uh, <laughs> uh, they, the little dots that you see below it, they had pegs. I actually have a picture. Maybe I'm going to share my screen if I can. Can I share my screen over your screen? Yeah, let me take that one down. Hey, just real quick note to everybody. That's the one, guys, I also tell you all the time that SAT Day got the boot and SUN Day got moved up to the first That's day of the week. That's where I'm headed. That's where uh, I'm headed. Now, is my we're going to get a second of getting it out of there. And oh, you got okay. yours ready? Okay, yeah, I yeah, got it. Up. There you go. Okay. This is a clay tablet. You can see the little pegs that are casting shadows. And if you look really close, you can see the, um, the same images at the top of this. There is... Uh, holes down the right, holes down the left, where they would move one, two, three, four, four, all the way to 30. You can see the little at the lower right, you can see XXX, that's 30. Uh, the zodiac is in the middle, so they had the first day of the month, the middle of the month, which was called the Ides, I D E S, and then the end of the month, at the all the way around the zodiac. And then, of course, they would move the little peg from uh, left to right Saturday, Sunday, Moon Day, Mars Day, Ju Mercury's Day, Jupiter's Day, Venus Day. That is the seven day pagan planetary week that was adopted by Constantine in 321 AD. Well, guess what? He worshiped Mithra, the sun god. He didn't want the sun to take in the back seat to Saturn day, Saturn's day. The reason why Saturn was the very first day of the pagan week is because Saturn terrified everybody. Saturn ate his own children. Um, he was just an absolute ogre of a god, and the pegs were t pagans were terrified of him, and so they basically honored him as being the first of everything. Well, Constantine could give a hoot about uh, Saturn. So he unceremoniously bumped 
Saturn day from the first day of the pagan planetary week all the way to the end, and all the other days moved up one day. Now, in the Middle Ages, um, I'm going to stop sharing screen here and come back to see you. In the Middle Ages, am I here? Yeah, yeah, you're okay. here, sir. In the Middle Ages, uh, the Norse, um, the Egy uh, Egyptian, <laughs> European gods came into play. Instead of uh, Mars Day, we had Woden's Day, okay, or excuse me, Tuesday. Tew was another god of war. Woden became Wednesday. Thor became Thor's Day, Thursday. Freya, Frigga became Friday. And, of course, Saturday was already named. It just moved from the first day of the week to, this, to the um, seventh day of the week. So guess what? You can count backwards. Sabbath six five four three two one Sabbath six five four two three one that will blow up in three twenty one A.D. because from that time onward Saturday was the first day of the week, not the seventh. Sorry. Yep. Just then you got fact. a problem like Samoa in modern day, like in twenty eleven. Yes, when they moved the international date line, and there were some Seventh Day Adventists on the Samoan Islands, and of course they couldn't. It's like, oh, oh, this is the Sabbath, you know. And of course it's just an international date line. It's man made. You know, so right. man, I mean, man's been monkeying with their calendars. Man can monkey with the with the dateline because the dateline is where the man-made calendar begins. The Heavenly Fathers could care less about that international dateline. So that's the reason why some lunar Sabbath keepers, some of them are keeping it on Tuesday, some keeping it on Wednesday some months because of where the month started versus the relationship of that international dateline. If they're still keeping the Sabbaths on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th day of the lunar month. They're just, the, the problem is we have a Gregorian calendar that's superimposed over the top of it, which shouldn't be, but that's the way the believers have decided to do it. And so that's the way it's still done in places, I guess. I think but, that's why people struggle too, is because they're trying to look at two things and rectify it in their mind. Yeah, they are. And and it's so hard to tell that to clients and your employers and yep. And and people just need to tell them there's a it's a totally different calendar system that starts a, a clarification for people real quick right it there. It does. Um, I were fast running out of time. I had no ideas. <laughs> oh no! Don't worry. Time. We're we're fine if we run over. I mean, I'd like the you know you you go right ahead. No worries. Okay. No worries. I well, mean, anyway, at the very um, end when we are done, I'd love to do some Q and A even if we. Yes, I'll, I'll stay here as long as you want. But anyway, the next thing I'd like to tackle is the three Sabbaths in a row. And that may take up the, the rest of the time here. I don't know. But uh, in Scripture, in Exodus 12, 16, and 19, you can, you can remember I told you any Sabbath you can date, identify, always falls on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th day of the month. For three months in a row after the Exodus, this happens. And I'm sorry, but there's not a Saturday Sabbath calendar out there. There's not a Anakian calendar out there uh, that will tolerate this. And I, I, I'm just, the, I'm just the bearer of the news. I'm not the bad guy. I'm actually kind of nice and likable. People that have met me think I'm okay. So I'll vouch wife, for him. He's a good guy. Yeah, my wife's still married to me, 31 years later. So anyway. Yeah. Although she probably wonders why sometimes. Anyway, in, in Exodus 12, we have the Exodus, of course, is what's going on there. And, of course, Passover is the 14th of Abib. The 15th of Abib is the, what I'm telling you right now is the Sabbath. But Israel didn't know it was a Sabbath when they left. People say, oh, well, that can't be the Sabbath because they were you carried all their goods and they are herding their animals. And they walked you know, out of Egypt on this. They hadn't been told it was a Sabbath yet. They weren't told it was anything about us that reminded of it was Sabbath until Exodus 16. So in Exodus 12, they still didn't know that that particular day was a Sabbath. But later in Ezek, excuse me, in Leviticus 23, we learned that the first day of unleavened bread is an annual Sabbath. Okay, so Abib 14 is Passover. Abib 15 is the first day of unleavened bread. And just about anybody who's a feast keeper will tell you, oh yeah, that's the Sabbath. They'll say, oh, but it's an annual Sabbath. But in the New Testament, it's called an high Sabbath which I'll get to in a moment. And a high Sabbath is when you have a weekly Sabbath and an annual Sabbath that overlap. That's where you get this high Sabbath deal, okay? Israel didn't know that this was a Sabbath. So, and what I tell people is they weren't breaking the Sabbath. This was a victory parade. This wasn't work. When they walked out of Egypt, this was not work. That was a victory parade. It's just no different than when the man from Galilee healed the, the man, the, the, the cripple, on the Sabbath, and he carried his bed and went home. What was he going to do? Leave his bed there? It might have been his only belongings other than the clothes on his back. So he walked home, and everybody accused him of breaking the Sabbath. Did he? No. 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 And it says they left by night, too. So, I mean, yeah. you know, they. Yeah. Well, 
it was still dark when they left, but they had they marched 30 miles. So there's no way for them to have marched 30 miles in the dark. They had they were still marching probably close to day or daylight or close to dark, I'm guessing. But I can prove based on where uh, Numbers 33 says they went from Ramses to Sukkoth. And if you look on a map, that's roughly 30 miles apart. So, I mean, I can hike 30 miles, but it takes me eight hours to do it. You know, so, of course, that was when I was younger. <laughs> I have no idea what I do now. But so anyway. In Exodus 12, uh, we learn, if you will, that they left on the 15th day of the month. And uh, the first day of unleavened bread is a beep 15, and they call it an annual Sabbath. I'd like to interject to you that it is also a weekly Sabbath, and here's my proof. You know that the, the Ten Commandments are listed in Scripture twice, remember? That's right. The one's, run, one's in Exodus 20, and you're very familiar with that. That links the weekly Sabbath to creation. You remember that? You want to, anybody out there in, um, what, what is this called? Seven Trumpers Land, Preppers Land? <laughs> Seven Trumpets Prepper, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody in this land, in this realm, within the sound of my voice, care to guess what Deuteronomy 5 links the Sabbath to? <laughs> You're going to love this. I'm going to read it right here from Scripture. This is Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15. It says, keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as Yah, thy Elohim, has commanded you. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. This is basically the same thing that you'll find in Exodus 20. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yehovah, thy Elohim. In it there should not do any work, thou nor thy son or thy daughter, the manservant. Remember, I told you it was all the same thing. I'll bypass that. Go straight to verse 15. It says, And remember that you were a servant in the land of Egypt, and that Yehovah, thy Elohim, brought thee out there by a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. Therefore, Yah commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Bang. The weekly Sabbath is linked to the Exodus, and the Exodus began on Abib 15. And you know what? That command where it lists this in Deuteronomy 5 means that every Abib 15 is a weekly Sabbath. Otherwise, it wouldn't be part of this. It was the seventh day of creation week. That doesn't change regardless of where we are in time, right? The weekly Sabbath was the seventh day of the week, creation week. It's an eighth day of the month, but it was the seventh day of the week. So Exodus 20 never changes. It, you can read it the same. Doesn't matter when you read it. It also it always points back to the Sabbath being the seventh day of the creation week. Guess what? Same thing applies in Deuteronomy five. It always points to Abib fifteen, and it, as always, a weekly Sabbath. So, yeah. there in that's the first month. Second month is in Exodus sixteen, and this is when they got manna. And everybody's familiar with this. I'm going to go back to share my screen here. If I can remember which one I'm doing. Okay. Well, there's, uh, that's the first month right there. We have Abib 15 there. That's, and that's, and you have the seven days of unleavened bread. That's what I have highlighted. The 15th there is the first day of unleavened bread. Then we're actually, we're in that time frame right now. Okay, here we go. Second month, Abib 16. And if you'll read, it says that on the 15th day of the second month, and I've got highlighted here that uh, the, it, the children of Israel murmured, you know, whining, we, you know, sent us back to Egypt. We're going to starve to death, blah, 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 blah. And the heavenly father said, Moses, they're not fussing at you. They're fussing at me. He says, tonight they're going to get quail and tomorrow they're going to get manna. And I want you to collect one portion for five days and then a double portion on the sixth day because the following day is the Sabbath. Okay, here's the next day. That's a beep 16 or excuse me, second month, 16th day. They get one portion, one portion. Whoops. Do this, one portion, one portion that day, one portion this day, one portion this day, and two portions that way. Why? Because this day is a weekly Sabbath. Look, brothers and sisters, if the 22nd day of the second month is a Sabbath, so is the 8th, 15th, and 29th by default. That's two months in a row that I can, and you can go back and do the math, okay? Or rewatch this video. Here, let me do this to you. You, if you will call or the email, I'll give you my email address too. It's admin, A-D-M-I-N, at creationcalendar.com. If you email me and ask me for this study, I'll be happy to email it to you or, or mail it to you. Email, it's easier. And that way you can have it for yourself. You can do the math at your own at your leisure, and I'll be happy to send it to you. All right, third month, okay? This is in Exodus 19, and this takes a little time, a little bit of effort to look at, but I have two, I can prove it twice, Okay. Um, and let me turn the page here. So, sorry, just to pause a second. I see a lot of comments in the question asking, how do we count off the Sabbath? Where does the count start? 
Uh, we'll, we'll get Troy to explain oh, that in a minute. But Rob yeah, also yeah. said Luke has videos on how to get stuff, uh, how to get started off right. There is a whole playlist on the channel, guys, that I'll put in this video afterwards about understanding the Creator's Calendar, defending the Creator's Calendar, restoring the Creator's Calendar. Like there's there's whole mini documentaries, sub videos. Right. But CreationCalendar.com. Like also go over and check out Troy's work. Like he. Literally, the stuff that I've discussed over the years, there's multiple times I've went over and checked the elders' work and compared his notes with mine. I'm like, shoot, that's spot on. So, like, there's multiple witnesses here tonight. You can go and do the research. So, I know we're covering a lot of information, but the meat of it, you can go and take the time to digest it. And we'll go into some more stuff here. Just, just bear with us. All right, third month. I'm going to go to my... I think I need to do the screen here. Where, did I already do screen? Okay, no, I haven't. All right, I'm going to share screen here real quick. Okay, this is a text. This is Exodus 19. Remember I told you in Exodus 19 we found an, a third month in a row. And it says, and Yah said to Moses, go into the, if you'll read 19.1, it tells you that it's in the third month. Okay, I should probably have read that first. Okay, um, actually, I am going to read that first. I'm going to leave that up on the screen, but I am going to read uh, Exodus 19.1 here because this kind of sets the table and because I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and feel free to answer out loud. I know I'm only going to hear Lucas, but that's quite all right. You guys tell me. Okay. <laughs> all right. It says in the third, uh, this is Exodus 19.1, in the third month when the children of Israel were gone forth from the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Okay. Same day as what? As he entered Sinai. <laughs> Okay, but it says the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai, but the same day as what? It's comparing it the same day as something. And the answer is right above it. When they were gone forth out of the land of Egypt. Okay, I say because they left the land of Egypt in the first month. It says the same day came they in the third month into the wilderness of Sinai. That's all this verse is saying. Okay, and while you might think, oh, that's a stretch, you're just, you know, making this up, I'm going to prove it to you that I'm not making it up, okay? Now, I'm going to, when did Israel, Israel leave Egypt? On the 15th day. Okay, and I'm going to challenge that and say that's when they left Ramses. It says they left the land of Egypt. Okay, I expected you to say that, and that's quite all right. Um, I'm going to read from you uh, at Numbers 33. And this is verse 3, 33, verse 3. It says, And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month. On the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went forth, or went out with a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. Okay? Verse 6 says, and uh, excuse me, da, 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 verse 5, And the children of Israel removed from Ramses, which we just learned is where they left, which is the capital of Egypt at that time. And they pitched in Sukkoth. Sukkoth is only 30 miles away. They're still in the land of Egypt. Now, third, uh, verse 6. And they part, departed from Sukkoth and pitched in Etham, which is on the edge of the wilderness. That would be the wilderness of Sheen that's right there next to Egypt. Guess what? When did they leave the land of Egypt? On the 16th. They were still in the land of Egypt on the 15th. They only made it 30 miles. But gotcha. they, they, okay. On the 16th is when they arrived at Mount Sinai. Okay. Now that's, that's, that's proving it one way. All right. Now it says, and Yah said unto Moses, go to the people. I'm reading on the screen now, Exodus 19, 10, and 11. And Yah said, go to the people and sanctify them today, tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day because Yah is going to come down. All right? So here it is. Third day. Notice I marked this. All right? Here's the third day. So if this is the third day when he was going to come down, that means this must have been the first day. All right? Can I prove it? Sure I can. Jubilees 1.1 flat out says that Israel arrived at Mount Sinai on the 16th day of the third month. I'm reading it. And it happened in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt in the third month on the 16th day of this month. And Yah spoke to Moses saying, ascend to me here onto the mountain. All right, here it is. Today, tomorrow, third day. See that? Today, tomorrow, third day. Guess what? If that is today, tomorrow, third day, that puts the 15th, the 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th as the sabbaths and now you have some serious problems with the gregorian calendar you got some serious calendars with any count cal any man-made calendar i just blew up so, excuse me i didn't do it any man-made calendar scripture just blew up i was just the mouthpiece 
That's right. Yeah, that format right there, you can only even get two months in a row on a leap year on a Roman calendar at Bayes correct. for one month in a row. If Friday was the first month, you could get uh, on in March, you can get the same days of the week falling on the same place. But guess what? Passover is not in February. <laughs> and this started at Passover. This one, two, three months started in the first lunar month of the Hebrew year. It had nothing to do with the pagan papal calendar or their months. You know, when I first started studying this, this was one of the most paramount mathematical equations that I couldn't work out. I think that one actually got first place and the Battle of Jericho came in strong second. <laughs> and then I guess the 10th day of the month for the lame would probably be an honorable mention after that. I've got that queued up. I could do that, but I see we're right at eight o'clock. So I'm gonna let you do what you have to do unless you want me to keep talking. Oh, no, keep talking. Hey, keep uh, talking. we can go a whole nother 30 minutes if need. <laughs> uh, actually, as long as we don't go over two hour mark, no worries. Okay. Well, I'll just keep marching right along here then. If you're in, if you're up for it, I'm up for it. Yeah, um, the, uh, I know before we do close out, if we can hit something on the, on the two new moon thing, that would definitely, that's definitely a good caveat. Okay. Um, Let's see. I think I'm at the historical record. I think I promise that. Uh, I was challenged with this when I was uh, several months into this. I was sharing uh, the Lunar Sabbath with a friend out of Chicago, and she said, Troy, that's all fine and well and good, but where's the paper trail? Where's the historical record that says that the Sabbath is by the moon? And I was floored because I hadn't seen anything. It's like, oh, no. What if I'm wrong? I wasn't. <laughs> what? Well, pay attention. Uh, tell tell me if you think that this sounds like Saturday's the Sabbath. Okay, where am I at? Where is? Am I sharing the screen yet? I'm not, uh, okay, here we are. It's still I had, I hadn't okay. Seen I got ball. you. Okay, here we are. All right. The new. This is from the Jew, Universal Jewish Encyclopedia. You reckon they might know something? It says the new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent upon the lunar cycle. I don't think any quote can be any clearer than that one. Here's another one. The Hebrew Shabbaton was celebrated at intervals of seven days, corresponding with the changes in the moon's phases. Encyclopedia Biblica, 4180. Here's another one. Scribner's Dictionary of the Bible. In the time of the earliest prophets, the noon stood in the same line with another lunar observance, the Sabbath. <laughs> and of course, he goes on to say the same as I did. Uh, I'll read it on. Ezekiel, who curiously enough frequently dated his prophecies on the new moon, describes the gate of the inner court of the new temple looking eastward as kept shut for the six working days, but open on Sabbath and new moon. Interesting that they happen to bring that out too. Uh, the Hebrew month, <clears throat> this is quoting from the Encyclopedia Biblica again. The Hebrew month is a lunar month and a quarter of this period, one phase of the moon, appears to have determined the week of seven days. And why have you never been taught this? Because they don't want you to know. That's right. Because the churches are not into teaching the truth. The churches, churches are into teaching you what they want you to hear. And then they say it over and over again until you believe it. There's another one from Hutton Webster in his book, Rest Days, page 254. The Hebrews employed lunar seven day weeks, which ended with a special observances on the seventh day, but nonetheless were tied to the moon's course. Here's another from the Encyclopedia Biblica. This intimate connection between the week and the month was soon dissolved. It, it is certain that the week soon followed a development of its all of its own, and it became the custom without paying any regard to the days of the month. Of course, that would be a lunar month at that time, so that the new moon no longer coincided with the first day. Okay, this is clearly when something happened to start changing the Hebrew calendar, and that happened in the fourth century, right about 341 AD, Hillel II, basically Rome held a gun to his head and said, fix the room, you fix your calendar, meaning affix it, as in tie it to anchor it, you know, because the uh, lunar calendar floats all over the place, which is where we're headed with one of the <laughs> Beeb 10, but we're headed there here in just a moment. Here's another one from Encyclopedia Biblica. The custom of <clears throat> celebrating the Sabbath every seventh day, irrespective of the relationship of the day to the moon's phases led to a complete separation from the ancient view of the Sabbath. Did I have any reason to be worried about a paper trail? 
No, I think you're in good shape. <laughs> matter of fact, matter of fact, do you want to play? Do you want me to cue up that video that you sent oh, me? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, Here, hold on just to, a second. What he's about to play is an Adventist. Um, You'll recognize him and his voice, if nothing else, his face and his voice here in a minute. His name is Doug Batchelor, and he flat out says that the Sabbath is by the moon. Go ahead, play it. Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, how he went into the house of God? By the way, this was a lunar Sabbath when David did it. You want me to play it again for those in the <laughs> back, Troy? Yeah, please do. If you're in the back. <laughs> Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, how he went into the house of God? By the way, this was a lunar Sabbath when David did it. Oh, that's damaging. Whew. You don't get that kind of of honesty very often from any person to high up in elevation in any uh, denomination. And I, I don't, Doug Batchelor's not a Lunar Sabbath keeper to my knowledge, but I applaud him for making that statement because I can prove to you, for, if, you're, if you're a Seventh-day Adventist out there watching this, I can prove to you from Ellen White's writings that the Sabbath is by the moon. Ask me, admin at creationcalendar.com. Email me and I'll, get, I'll send it to you. Uh, right. There's that Gray Samadon letters, too, that's at right. the Andrews University that admits yep. that they've done a study about the um, uh, Lunar Sabbath right there as well. Yep. All right. I'm going to go back to my screen share here. Okay. Um, these imported, this is from Hutton Webster again, Rest Days 244. These imported, and that's talk, superstitions, and that means from Babylon, if you'll read it in context, eventually led the Jewish rabbis to call Saturn Shabtai, which means the star of the Sabbath. And it was not until the first century of our era when the planetary week had become an established institution that the Jewish Sabbath seems always to have corresponded to Saturn's day. Now, get this. This thus the condemnation in Amos 5. 26 was set in stone. If you'll remember, Amos uh, basically said that Israel had started worshiping Kian, a star god of their own making. Um, I'm reading in the blue now, Acts 7.43. Stephen quotes Amos, and he's translated as saying, Remphan, the star god that you made for yourselves. Guess what? Kian is the Greek Hebrew word for Saturn, and Remphan is the Greek word for Saturn. So the Sabbath of Scripture is based upon a lunar cycle. Israel did not come to worship Saturn on his day, but but they, excuse me, Israel did come to worship Saturn um, on Saturday, or the Sabbath on Saturday, but it did not happen uh, at, until a much later date than Amos, of course, or Stephen for that matter, and it certainly was not by divine command. Here's another one from the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia. With the development of the importance of Saturday, excuse me, the Sabbath as a day of consecration and the emphasis laid upon the significant number seven, the week became more and more divorced from its lunar connection. Uh, divorced is a pretty heavy word, okay? <laughs> the four quarters of the moon was an obvious division of the month, and it, most it is the most significant that the older parts of the Hebrew scriptures, the new moon and Sabbaths are almost invariably mentioned together. The month is beyond question, an old sacred division of time common to all Semites. Even the Arabs who received the week at quite a late period from the Syrians greeted the new moon with religious acclamations. We cannot tell exactly when the Sabbath became disassociated from the month. There's, you have this divorce right here, and here it says disassociated. Same thing. Now, my question is, how is it the scholars cannot tell when the Sabbath was disassociated from the lunar cycle, while modern Saturday Sabbath keepers in general deny that the Sabbath was ever connected to the moon in the first place? Yeah, you've answer. got a serious, uh, serious conflict there of, of two stories colliding. And here's your answer. The ox knows his owner, the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know my people do not consider. That's the reason why we don't know. Here's another one. This is a more recent one from 1995 uh, from Clark Nelson. It says, Lunar Solar Calendar Foundations of the Jewish Calendar extend from the earliest verses of Scripture. Natural uniform motions of the heavenly spheres are the pivotal markers of time reckoning. A, the list of ancient characters mentioned in the Old Testament use this lunar solar calendar system of time recording. Observation of lunar phases coupled with solar positioning guided the lifetime ages of Adam and his descendants. Changes in the appearance of the moon provided the seven-day week. Originating with ancient interpretations of lunar time, divisions of seven days separate the four basic lunar phases. Starting with the dark new moon, 
and that's the dark phase of the moon. The moon gradually comes into view on following nights. In about seven days, the first half of the moon is visible. The second half waxes until a full moon at the end of two weeks. The lunar light reverses prog progression in the third week, waning to half visibility again. A fourth week completes the month. The vis visibility again diminishes toward a new moon or the dark phase. Completion of four lunar phases comprises a month. I cannot tell you how pleased I was to find these things. Now, some people can say, well, wait a minute, that those are all new. And the oldest thing you saw there was from 1899. I mean, you know, where, where's, can you find something older? How about Philo? There you go. You know, it's funny. You were reading the last quote and I was thinking about Philo. <laughs> How about Philo? Is he good enough? Philo was, he was, he was lived from 20 BC to 50 AD. So he was alive the entire, just about, the, well, the entire life of uh, Yahshua, but he was, he wasn't quite alive till the end of the uh, the disciples era, but he was alive during the entire ministry of the New Testament era. And he was, Philo was also chosen to be the head delegate uh, when Rome was beating the snot out of, of, of Israel. Uh, they chose Philo to lead the delegation before the, you ever heard of Caligula? <laughs> the emperor uh, to plead Israel's case. Now I'm gonna ask you a question. If Philo, what, now, he remember, he's a Hebrew historian, first century Hebrew historian. If he did not understand uh, the way the Hebrews did things, if he did not believe in the known doctrines of the Hebrews of his era, would he have been chosen to lead that delegation before the emperor? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple of quotes from Philo. All right. And this is speaking of lunar intervals. <clears throat> I'm going to drop that down so the red doesn't show quite yet. Speaking of lunar intervals, this is Special Laws 1, uh, paragraph 178. Philo writes, There is one principle of reason by which the moon waxes and wanes in equal intervals, both as it increases and diminishes in illumination. The seven lambs, because it received the perfect shapes in periods of seven days, the first half of the moon, seven day, excuse me, the first half in the first seven day period after its conjunction with the sun, full moon in the second. And when it makes its return again, the first is to half moon, and then it ceases at its conjunction with the sun. That sounds exactly like, like what Clark Nelson just said a minute ago. Yep. Now, I'm going to, I hear right now, this is a naysayer saying, but Philo does not say anything about the moon being tied to the week. All he says is the quarter phases are seven days apart. And I can read that and I can be honest in the context in which it is written, it doesn't say that the moon is tied to the week. It does indeed just say that the moon, it's seven days from the half to the full and full to the half and blah, blah, blah. But let's read this quote. <laughs> Philo gives the second witness on mating with the preliminary studies. This is, uh, what is X? That's 19, uh, paragraph 102. For it is said in scripture on the 10th day of this month, let each of them take a sheep according to his house in order that from the 10th there may be consecrated to the 10th that is to Elohim. The sacrifices which have been presented to the soul, which is illuminated in two portions out of the three until it is entirely changed in every part and becomes a heavenly brilliancy like a full moon at the height of its increase at the end of the second week. I'm sorry, but Philo does assume that the full moon happens at the end of the second week. And it has to because that is where Passover is. Passover is at the end of the second week. There's a full moon that night. It announces the first day uh, of the unleavened bread as a weekly and annual Sabbath. So there you have the historical record. I'm coming back to you here. There you have, and I did not give you everything I've got. That was just a rough and quick, and that actually took longer than I wanted it to. But uh, just to let you know, I, I, the my ammo uh, container is full when it comes to the historical record. Yeah, and you know, an in interesting thing is like the tenth day of the month. People, when they start adding that up, uh, you use the Enochian calendar, you use the Gregorian calendar, you use all these calendar formats. At yep. some point, you're going to come up short where that Sabbath falls on the 10th day when you're supposed to be putting that lamb up. Yep. And if you ain't got one, you got to go buy one. That's exactly where I'm at next. It's already queued up. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to finish what he just started. All right. If you don't mind. Um, <clears throat> it says on the 10th day of Abib, that's the day to purchase a lamb if you don't have one. Okay. And Abib floats, Abib 10 floats around on the Roman calendar. 
All right, it's not fixed on the Roman calendar. But if you did not, if you own a lamb, that's fine. But if you did not own a lamb, you had to go buy one. There's absolutely no legislation anywhere in scripture that says, oh, by the way, if a beeb tin falls on the Sabbath, then you would buy the lamb on the 9th or the 11th. And you know for a fact that if that were the case, if the Sabbath could possibly ever fall on a beeb tin, that that would be the case where there would have to be an exception where you could buy it on a day before or a day after, but you don't find it. A beeb 14, of course, is Passover, which is a preparation day for the first day of unleavened bread. That's going to always be a work day. And Abib 16 is also a work commanded work day. Now, if you'll remember, oh, by the way, Abib 10, Abib 14, Abib 16 float around on the Roman calendar. I'm going to share my screen here. I'm going to read something from you or from, this is from Josephus. This is another first century Hebrew historian. And this is, says, and it's in Antiquities of the Jews, book three, chapter 10, section five. Uh, Josephus has this to say about the, I need to fix that. Didn't have an E in it. Oh, wrong place. I hate it when I misspell stuff. Anyway, Josephus has this to say about the Passover season. In the month Xanthicus, and of course that's the Babylonian name for the first month, which is called by us Nisan, which is also a pagan name for the first month. Uh, at the beginning of the year, on the 14th day of the lunar month, uh, when the sun is in Aries, for in this time it was that we were delivered in, from bondage under the Egyptians. <clears throat> The law ordained that we should every year slay the sacrifice, which I before told you we slew when we first came out of Egypt, and which was called the Passover. And so we celebrate this Passover in companies, uh, leaving nothing into, of what we sacrifice until the following day. The Feast of Unleavened Bread succeeds that of Passover and falls on the 15th day of the month and continues seven days, wherein they feed on unleavened bread. But on the second day of unleavened bread, which is the 16th day of the month, this is first fruits, okay? This is wave sheaf. They partake of the first or the fruits of the earth, but before that day, they do not touch them, okay? So then they take a handful of ears and dry them if they need to. They beat them and purge them and they wave that offering, okay? Now, if you read that last line, it says, and after this, they may publicly and privately reap their harvest. He's saying that on the 16th day of the month, once the sheaf has been waved and accepted, then they could go out and start the barley harvest. Okay. So I told you that the Beeb 10 was a work day. It's a commerce day. You have to go buy lamb if you don't own one. The Beeb 14 is a preparation day for unleavened bread. A Beeb 16 is a day that you can start your uh, barley harvest. Okay. So basically, Josephus is explaining to the Gentile nations how the barley could be harvested on the 16th. And he says exactly what it says right here in Leviticus 23. I'm not going to read it. Um, but anyway, that's exactly what happens. We have 14th being Passover, the 15th being the first day of unleavened bread, and then you wave the sheaf on the morrow after the Sabbath day. A lot of people say, oh, that's talking about a Saturday. No, it's not. Josephus is a first century Hebrew historian. He said that the 16th day of the month is wave sheaf. And if it was wave sheaf in the first century, then it was wave sheaf 3,500 years prior to that when Leviticus was being written, or when however long prior to that it was happening. So what we have is a Beeb 16 is a commanded workday. So if there's a continuous uninterrupted seven-day cycle, then Saturday is, and Saturday is the weekly Sabbath, then every few years, either a Beeb 10, 14, or 16 will fall on a Saturday. How is that possible? And the answer is, it is not possible. The math just don't work. I think and they're trying to do common core scriptural. Yeah, they are. Here's the evidence, okay? And actually, I want this up here if I can get it. Oh, I know what happened. I hope I highlighted, doink, doink, doink. I highlighted something on the previous page, and it pushed everything down. Okay, that's what I need to get rid of. All right, here we go. Evidence, Abib 10 fell on a Saturday in 2003, 2020. The 14th of Abib fell on a Saturday in 2004, 2008, 2011, and 2018. I've been keeping track. Abib 16 fell on a Saturday in 2002, 2006, and 2009. I am sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but if you're keeping a Saturday Sabbath, you're doing something terribly wrong because it cannot be proven to be the Sabbath based on the festival cycle and the fact that the Abib 10, 14, and 16 are commanded work days. I'm sorry, but those days are based on the cycle of the moon, not on a pagan papal calendar. That's right. Okay. Now, I don't have the two days of the queued up to show you anything. It'd have to be just me talking. 
but um, uh, like I said, we can either do that a different time. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to come back and do. You know um, what? Why don't we do that? Why don't we do like uh, not May, but maybe sometime in June, if you're free up, we, sure. we get back on here and do a second part. Sure. I'd be happy to do that. Um, well, you want to do some uh, questions and answer with people? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I know one question that people have, and I'm and sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. Uh, I've, I've just been following the comments as they went through as you were presenting this evening. Sure. Uh, one of the top question things that everybody asked was, how do we start this count off? How do we know that we're finding Sabbath, right? How is, oh. you know, new moon start? How do we find new moon? How do we count off find Sabbath? New moon. Okay. Um, it's actually kind of easy. Um, you read it in... Um, the Clark K. Nelson quote and the Josephus quote. Okay, new moon is the dark phase of the moon. It's not the first first visible crescent. That's I have an entire study on this. If you would like to see, if you're doing right now doing a lunar month and you're keeping it based on the first visible crescent, please email me admin a d m i n at creationcalendar.com. I have an entire study that will address that. That is the Babylonian new moon. It's not the Hebrew new moon. Now they they copied it. They brought it home and did that in Israel for a while. But when a prophet came along and fixed it, then they would get back on the father's calendar. But that was the Babylonian version of new moon. But the first visible crescent does play a part. There are 28 visible phases. You know what I need to do? I'm going to put a calendar back up here on the screen for just a moment, if that's all right. You go right ahead, sir. I'll cue it just as soon as it shows up. Okay. I need to scroll back. It's basically the first one I, I showed you. Oh, come on. Load, load, load. There we go. That's the one right there. Okay. Uh, share that one. Go. Okay. All right. There are 28 visible phases of the moon. Okay. There are... In, excuse me, there are 28 visible phases of the moon in a lunar phase cycle, okay? There are 28, see what I'm highlighting there? There are 28 weekdays in a lunar month. There are four quarter phases of the moon in a lunar cycle that are approximately seven days apart. There are four weekly Sabbaths and a lunar month, lunar calendar month that are seven days apart. After, now can you see what I'm highlighting right there? After the last Sabbath of the month, there are either one or two new moon days. Okay, and I just moved something here. Doink. If I had another month, let me cop, see if I can, see if I can duplicate this real quick. Let me just add it right here. Did I do it? I did do it, perfect. Actually, I don't need that column. Delete entire row. Doink, that's what I want right there. That work? After the last Sabbath of the month, after the 29th day of the lunar cycle, there are one or two new moon days. After the last Sabbath of the month, there that's in a lunar month. After the last Sabbath of the month in the lunar cycle, there are one or two dark days. You notice how the numbers were the same? You had there are 28 visible phases of the moon in a lunar cycle, and there are 28 weekdays. There are four quarter phases of the moon that are approximately seven days apart. There are four weekly Sabbaths that are seven days apart. After the last day of the month, after the last day of the week, I should say, of the month, there are one or two dark days in a lunar cycle, and there are one or two new moon days. I'm sorry, people, but... Nature doesn't lie. This is lined up. You, I mean, this is lined up hand and glove. So the way you would tell, how do you start? I mean, I just gave you basically every key that you need to know to understand all this. This day, the first day of the month will end. You'll see the first visible crescent at the end of day one. What the first visible crescent does is it tells you new moon day is over. The new moon celebration is over because it could be one day or could be two days. But when you see that first visible crescent, you know that the next day is the first weekday because every phase of the moon, every visible phase announces one of these days. Okay. The first visible crescent announces this day. Well, guess what? You have a, a uh, first quarter phase that will show up at sunset right here because you see 
on the first day, you'll see the, the first visible crescent at sunset that night. That's announcing this day as the first weekday. At sunset on this night, whoops, on the seventh, you'll see a first quarter moon directly overhead announcing this day as the first Sabbath. For the first two weeks, the, you'll see the phase of the moon at sunset the night before that's announcing the following day as whatever the phase of the moon indicates. On the last two weeks of the month, you'll look at dawn or as soon as you wake up. If you wake up every morning at seven o'clock, then do that. Just continue to do that. And you'll see the moon progressing over your head. You'll see the phases as they line up. You, the, the phases by and large line up every once in a while because the moon is now on, not on a circular orbit. It's on an egg-shaped uh, trek about the face of the earth. Um, the, sometimes the phases seem to be a little out of sync, but I can I can show you how they still announce the weekly Sabbaths. But by and large, when you have a 30-day month, because the 30-day months were the original, that came from creation. Um, the, the weekly um, cycle was based on a 30-day month, and there were always two days of new moon, and I can prove that from Scripture. Um, that's probably outside the scope of what we're doing here today. But if you have questions, anything I said, anything, a question you want answered, you can email me at admin at creationcalendar.com. I'll be happy to answer your questions. But um, that is how you start. If you see the first visible crescent, you know that the very next day is the first work day. And if you'll basically start from the first visible crescent counting your work days, then you'll, your Sabbaths will automatically line up with the phases of the quarter phases of the moon. Yeah, absolutely. And, and guys, we'll, we'll, we'll do another stream covering the two new moon days because I know a lot of people view the um, 30th day. Uh, whenever you have uh, two new moons, uh, some people will keep the 30th day as a translation day. I used to do that. Right. And then under further understanding in like the book of Samuel where that it you is. have King David, not, or before he was king, you right. see David missing at the feast two days in a row. It and it literally true. says feast. Yep. So and it's um, referring to the and David was ex apparently expected to sit at meet with the king, King Saul, on New Moon Day. That was what the whole context of that chapter is, and he was expected to sit with Saul for two days in a row. What's that tell you? He wasn't expected to sit there on a Sabbath. He wasn't expected to sit there on a weekday. He was expected. That was an agreement they had. I don't know where it came from. It wasn't divinely ordained, but that's what the agreement between those two men were. On New Moon Days, you're going to eat with the king. Well, David wasn't there for two days. And then on the third day, Jonathan shot his arrow, and you know the rest of the story. But that proves that there were originally two days of new moon every month. Because David, when he made the courses for the priests, he only made 24 courses. And when you use, understand that the year originally was only 360 days. There was 12 30-day months, 12 times 30 is 360. That means there was two days of new moon every month. And uh, that means uh, when you have 360 week there's 360 days in a year. There are only 48 weeks. So the courses that David made for the priests being 24, that meant the priests were going to serve twice a year. It's not rocket science. A 365-day year with 52 weeks, sorry, that doesn't work. That David's count doesn't work. doesn't make any sense. 24 doesn't evenly go into, you know, 52 weeks. So, But it makes perfect sense when you understand that the original year and the year that uh, and the, at the time when David had it, the year was 360 days long and it consisted of 12 30 day months. There was no 13th month. There was no no worry about was it one day or two day new moon. There were always two days of new moon at that time. That's right. And if somebody wanted to say uh, thank you for explaining in an understanding way. I mean, I think I think the only way to really address this, guys, is to very gently and very respectfully have this conversation with people because everybody wants to be militant about this, especially certain camps, certain groups um, in the community. And it's like, like oh, well, it's the that. Enoch calendar or nothing. It's uh, it's SAT day or nothing. It's like, guys, we're here to try to make sure it all lines with scripture. And nature. Because, and nature, that's right. Yeah. Scripture and nature are the first two witnesses. And of course, the historical record makes a good third witness. But I would like to address the people that are dogmatic about things like this. And this is another Troy Miller quote. Do you want to be right or do right? There you go. I want to do right. If, if I think I'm right and I present something and I say I'm right, that's fine. But if you prove me I'm wrong... That means that I have to change what I'm saying is correct. And if, if I have spiritual integrity, I mean, it demands that I, okay, you're right. If I, two plus two is five and you can show me that two plus two is four. Oops. 
my All spiritual right. integrity or my mathematical integrity with that point demand that I change my position. Okay, so I'll ask you again. Do you want to be right or do you want to do right? I, want to do I don't right. want I don't want to be right. I want to do right. That means that I can be taught. That means I am teachable. And if you want to be right, guess what? You're not teachable. You have to want to do right in order to be teachable. That's right. A humble spirit. That's right. I think we all need a humble spirit in the last days. I do not want to practice lies, lawlessness, or abomination. I mean, like, yeah. you know, what is it? I think it's in Second Ezra. It talks about don't be weighed down by your sins either. Like, I, I just don't want to be weighed down by the sins of the past. It's like, right. it's just like, you know, one of the um, revelations have kept coming to me over the years. You know, I started out with uh, SUN day, then went mm -hmm. to SAT day, then went to keeping the feast and keeping the father's calendar, <laughs> going from first visible crescent to new yep. moon by, you know, the dark moon and then right. starting off. And then that went from translation days to two new moon days. And so it has been a process. And I think, that you know, a lot of spiritual integrity. That proves exactly what I'm saying. That was spiritual integrity that forced you to make those changes because you, when you're faced with the evidence that you were wrong, you had the spiritual fortitude, the intestinal fortitude, the guts, <laughs> the cojones, whatever. You move forward, and that's what you have to do. And otherwise, you have no spiritual integrity. You lose your witness. You have no. You lose your witness. You don't want to damage your witness. You know. Yeah. You may. You may be the only person that the people in your circle of influence can can access the truth from and if you suddenly short circuit say well i'm not going to go there well, guess what then the people that you have in your influence over they're not going to go any further than you went probably that's so right our spiritual integrity demands that we move with the evidence and if the evidence does i i, <laughs> I have barely i've I have barely begun to present the evidence that Saturday is not the Sabbath. If you, like I said, I'll be happy to send you one of these. In fact, if you can figure out how a way to hold a raffle, uh, I will autograph a copy of this to the person that you tell me to, <laughs> and I'll send it to him. He, you know, I got you. Them. Yeah, we can probably do something like that the next yeah. uh, the next go around. Uh, be the seventh well, caller. And <laughs> right? What is it on the uh, on your website? The cloud is moving. We have to follow it. That's right. The cloud is moving. We have to either follow or be left in the wilderness. I thought that was great years ago. Whenever I, I was uh, looking to see other people out there that their research, I was like, surely I'm not the only one that's ran across this. And then, you know, worldslastchance.com, yep. your research, right. stuff that me and Brother Joel put together on Loud Cry Ministries on soundloudcry.com. Like, I just started comparing all of everybody's notes, and I'm like, this is right. I'm like, I know that I'm trying to tell myself this is foreign to me. This is probably not, you know, but at the more I tried to disprove it, the more that I was like, wow. The only way yeah. you can not see this is if you're dishonest with the evidence. And the only, and, and the problem is, is once you see this, you can never unsee it. No, that is true. This you is cannot one of those unsee truths. This. And I, I, some of the things I just showed you, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say I'm sorry because I'm not sorry. But some of the things I just showed you in here completely undoes the Saturday Sabbath. It just does. And I, 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 I'm not sorry. I mean, I wish you well. I don't wish you any ill. Uh, in fact, the reason why I shared it with you is because I want you to be my neighbor in the Father's kingdom. You know, we can both be wrong, but we both can't be right. And I can prove you that Saturday's not right. Now, if you can come up and show me that there's proof that the lunar Sabbath isn't right, I'll be happy to move along, you know, and follow the evidence. But right now, the evidence has led me right to what I presented to you. That's right. That's right. And, 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 you know, this is one of those things, guys, that it's not going to be something you filter out overnight. No, this is a process of months and sometimes years, because we have, like I said in the beginning, Stockholm syndrome, cognitive dissonance. I think it's like a mixed bag tr of tricks. You have to decompress and um, filter all this out through the wealth of truth that it takes a long time. And I can say after 12 years in this walk, I feel like I have finally like got a good foundation that if somebody hits me right now and says, show me chapter line verse, show me the historical documentation on that. I you can go down it like, like, you know, write down mm -hmm. punch list. Now, three months in a row, I need to go back and brush up on that. I really do because like ultimately in the back of my head, I know it's like the 15th. You can always back up to find where the 15th right. was three months in a row. But it's like, if somebody hit me with that right now, I would have to get the scripture out and break down each of those months right. mathematically on a piece of paper. But, you know, I think ultimately that's why the battle of Jericho is such a great mm -hmm. teaching tool because now you have a second witness. Yeah. And you, you can't, the first you, kings. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, I know. I've got to yeah. write that one down in my notepad too, but um, it, it's just so powerful because it makes you challenge the Roman calendar immediately. And then yeah. you've so got like spiritual integrity demands that you challenge that calendar. It absolutely does. Yeah, and that's what's so beautiful about the book is um, I know a lot of people are hung up on Hanak and Jubilees and try to push the uh, narrative for the Enochian calendar. Um, and uh, yeah, I have some serious issues with Jubilees. Uh, like uh, I don't, I'm not trying to delete out scripture and things like that, but there is some issues that cannot be um, compiled properly from Jubilees in comparison to other texts. And I don't use that as a calendar. I'm not going to take one book that is not in the 66 um, right. that, that are fluid and then add that one in and just cancel out everything else because one book said that that doesn't match the narrative. To the law and the prophets, if it speaks not according to this word, there's no light in it. So, yeah. And that, of course, it says to the law and the testimony. But if you read that, it basically means the repeated law well who repeated it the prophets did i mean that to the law and the testimony that's somebody who comes along as a second witness to the torah so isaiah 8 20 if you can't use isaiah 8 20 to prove your sabbath or what you believe then there's no light in it that's right yeah and you know uh what is it it's uh daniel 7 and 25 you shall think to change times and laws and i mean if you look at the roman church and you look at the uh adjustments they've tried to make to the commandments and you look at the adjustments to the father's calendar or their attempted adjustments to the father's calendar i mean it is so clear that the format in which we use in this construct right is is, is not acceptable and so then that should make everyone step to the drawing board okay there's there's the Enoch calendar people present there's the sadoc calendar slash presented there's this count off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But how do we, where does new moon fit? And then you've got, you know, the people that say, well, just do SAT day. And it's like, how is that possible? When I look here at this one calendar in particular, and SAT day used to be the first day of the week. It's just, yeah. you start going down. You, what people really need to do is draw a line. Yeah. And you put the loony solar scriptural calendar, sun, moon, and stars used properly in their, in their ordinances. You look at the SAT day Sabbath, the SUN day Sabbath, which is just insanity. Um, and then you put all the, you just put everybody across there and you start going down through there and checking boxes. Does this match? Does this match? You will eventually filter down to one calendar. The last two things I have on my list are what you just mentioned. I was going to go through and show you where scripture, I can prove to you from scripture that Saturday is a pagan day from scripture. And I can prove to you from scripture that the Sabbath is by the moon. Those are the two things that I had left that I, I, I clearly don't have time to get to. But uh, if, again, if you want the information, admin at creationcalendar.com, I'll be happy to send it to you and uh, I'll email it to you for free. I don't charge anything, anybody, anything. Uh, that's my Telegram channel. It's on there right now, uh, t.me slash creationcalendar. All the information you can prove, all the information about the Lunar Sabbath is on the website there, creationcalendar.com and on Telegram. So uh, you can go there and start digging if you want to, or you can just listen. That's fine. <laughs> Some people don't read. They rather watch a video. That's fine with me. I'll be happy to do my part with the video. So share this far and wide. It's awesome. Well, I, I thank you so much, my friend, for coming on. And, you know, maybe month after next, I've got to go to California this coming month and do construction right. for a couple of weeks. Right. Um, so me and Joel will be in the field for a couple of weeks, but then I'll be back home. So y'all willing, if you want to jump back on here, we can do a second part or, or you think of whatever you want to title it, you know, like you kind of know what's what the what the crowd is looking for. So, I mean, I know people people are hungry for this topic. I think it's like the scriptural cosmology um, the scriptural construct of the world, flat earth under firmament dawn, waters above, waters below, and then like the the time keeping principle. I think people are so hungry for this because we have been lied to so deeply that you so much as just stub your toe against a rock, just one rock mm -hmm. of truth, and you yep. look under there and it's like shining like a bright pearl, and you can't put it down. Yeah. And and I think that people have been lied to so long that when they come on here and they just so much as hear just the least bit of it, um, it just can't get out of your head. People are coming from all over the world. They're just like out of under the work under the rocks themselves, They're just coming out of the woodwork to find this. And you're right. The reason why is because we've been lied to for so long, and they're looking at the the policies of their governments right now. They're looking at you know the churches are enforcing vaccinations. I mean, or you know encouraging maybe I should say. I mean, there's all kinds of things that cause them to question what they've been told. I mean, flat Earth. You know, there's another. Re I mean, lied in school. You know, history had been changed. 
you know, the, the, nothing is as what it seems. Well, guess what? The calendar falls in the same category. And quite frankly, if you're a child of the king, you're going to want to keep his calendar. You know, That's right. And his calendar you can find in scripture and in nature. And if you're, like I said, your spiritual integrity, if you're a truth seeker, you will find the truth. And there's a lot of, an awful lot of people have found this and then thought, I'm the only person on the earth doing this. And they look on the internet and they find my website or you guys or, you know, world's last chance. They find 